with George and Court. All right, I see some more folks coming into the room. Uh, welcome. Uh, very, very important that you are here and we're happy to have you. Uh, so welcome Freehold Regional High School District uh, Virtual College Fair. This is a great opportunity for you out there to learn from these experts. These are the experts of their uh, university and all things about applying and, and the culture and everything that you would like to know uh, about these different institutions. They are able to help you. Uh, so if you have a specific question for any of these universities at any time, please utilize the Q&A button. It's either at the top or bottom of your screen. Um, anytime throughout this uh, 45 minute session, they will be able to type an answer to you um, or they can send you a private message or um, they will be able to answer live depending on where they're at. So uh, please utilize that Q&A because they cannot see or hear you. Um, sign up for more sessions. This is just night one of the Freehold Regional High School uh, District uh, uh, College Fair. So please, please sign up for more. A recording of this, including everything in the Q&A, everything in the chat will be available at strivescan.com forward slash FRHSD. I will put all of that in the chat for you. So no worries there. Um, just please utilize the Q&A if you have any questions. And with that, we will get kicked off with Georgian Court University. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott. Uh, I'm one of the admissions counselors at Georgian Court University. Uh, this is our presentation. I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly. Okay, so starting off is our five Mercy Corps values. These are five things we always like to bring up, things that we try and instill into everything we do at Georgian Corps. Those are respect, integrity, justice, compassion, and service. Those all sound like pleasant things to you, which I hope they do. Uh, then I hope you like uh, the general vibe and atmosphere of Georgian Court. Generally speaking, uh, I find that people on Georgian Court really feel at home on campus. Uh, it's a very small school. Uh, it's about a 13 to 1 student professor race ratio, so it's very easy to get to know uh, all of your classmates, all of your professors. You'll recognize all the faces you see walking around on campus, and it really helps to build a, a sense of place and a sense of belonging. Some quick facts. We were founded in 1908 and became co-educational in 2013. Before that, it was an all-female school. Now it's a co-ed school. Around 1,700 undergraduate students. Uh, Location-wise, we're in Lakewood, New Jersey, about 20 minutes from the shore and about an hour from New York City and Philly. This is our School of Arts and Sciences, our biggest school on campus. If you're interested in things like uh, biology, health sciences, psychology, social work, political science, uh, this would be the umbrella that you would fall underneath. So take a second, uh, see if there's anything in here that uh, you're interested in. Uh, nursing is uh, the most challenging school to get into at Georgian Court, one of the most prestigious uh, programs that we have. It's a sort of two-stage admissions process where we in the admissions office will make our decision and the nursing office themselves will also take a look at every nursing applicant. That's because there are a lot of resources that uh, come with our nursing program. We have a partnership with Hackensack Meridian Health, access to state-of-the-art labs. Uh, so there's a lot uh, that comes out of this program and the nursing program wants to make sure that only the best of the best students are coming in. So be prepared to make yourself look as good as possible if you're interested in nursing. If you're interested in things like accounting, finance, or graphic design and digital design, then you would fall under the umbrella of the School of Business and Digital Media. And here's a little list of the things we have there. Education is one of the larger schools we have as well, very popular major at Georgian Court. There are four different tracks, early childhood, elementary specific subject, and ESL. Uh, one feature I always like to point out is that each option includes eligibility, eligibility for the teacher of students with disabilities endorsement. Uh, that is a whole extra population of students that you'd be qualified to work with. It would open a lot of doors when it comes to actually finding jobs. So it's always very easy to recommend our education program. 
If you're interested in studying abroad, that's something you can absolutely do here at Georgia Court. At the top right, you can see some of the countries that we've sent students to before. Uh, if none of those totally fit what you want to do, that's totally okay. You can always work with the Global Education Office to try and find a program in a country you're interested in. And there are a lot of different ways, different time periods. You can go abroad from a summer to a semester to an internship abroad. There's a lot of different options to fit what exactly you need. We have an honors program as well. Uh, we look for mainly at a student's transcript, how many honors classes they've taken and their overall GPA. We try to look for around a 3.7. There are some additional honors classes that one has to take, but there's also a scholarship that comes with it, as well as uh, honors dorming. And if you're a psychology student, a new, uh, new addition is the fact that uh, uh, it's guaranteed admission into any uh, psychology master's programs we have if you're a part of the psychology honors program. So a lot of benefits to being a part of our honors program if you're offered admission. Career services, uh, obviously getting a degree is all about finding that job in the end. And over 92% of our graduates are in a major related job or grad school within six months of graduation. So the students that we have all come out very prepared for whatever it is uh, their next stage is. We have four residence halls, guaranteed housing for all four years. There's also guaranteed parking as well. And freshmen are allowed to have cars on campus. So if you don't really want to part with your car, you're totally allowed to bring it with you, which is, I believe, a little rare, but always something I like to bring up that we do. We have uh, over 40 different clubs and organizations, all of various different types. You can get an idea of uh, the general gist of what we have to offer here. Uh, if you're interested specifically in leadership organizations, I like to point out these four stuff like uh, Women in Leadership Development and the Student Government Association all look very good on a resume. So if you're interested in bolstering your leadership skills, then this is something to keep in mind. If you're an athlete, we're a Division II school, which means we're able to offer athletic scholarships. As you can see here, we're pretty competitive across the board, no matter uh, what sport you're interested in. If you're not an athlete, you can always come see a game and rest assured that you'll probably see one that's pretty exciting and fun. Obviously, tuition is a big factor for almost every student. You can see here uh, for full time per semester, it's about 16,000, nursing slightly more expensive. On the side as well, we have a residence and meal plan for a little under 6,000 a semester. It can sound a bit daunting, I understand, but uh, every student who is accepted is given a merit-based scholarship based on a GPA up to $19,000 which can take care of quite a big chunk of that. In addition, we try to offer a lot through financial aid. So be sure to fill out your FAFSA and send that to us as soon as you can. And we also help to guide students through things like applying for Pell Grants and NJ Tag. And this is just what our scholarship grade looks like. If you know what your GPA is, you can estimate about what scholarship you'd get. And if you need to maybe work hard for the upcoming year to try and boost yourself up to a new range. And that is about it. These are just some uh, important emails and phone numbers in case there's anybody in specific you'd like to contact. And I'll put my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have New Jersey City University. There you go. Good evening, all. My name is Carlos Tejeda, an admissions counselor and athletic liaison at New Jersey City University. Welcome all, and thank you for spending a little bit of your evening with us. So as I mentioned, let me share my screen. And uh, there you go. And there you go. So welcome to the New Jersey City University presentation. As I mentioned before, my name is Carlos Tejeda, a missions counselor and athletic liaison for at the university. So let's start it up. New Jersey City University, we're a small public institution located in the heart of Jersey City. We are located about 7.5 miles away from New York City. And the beauty of our campus is that we have so many public transportation that goes around campus that can facilitate the transportation between among the commuter students. Our main campus is located in Jersey City. However, we do have our School of Business in downtown Jersey City. The beauty of this building is that the train station is two buildings away. As a matter of fact, a lot of our, our business students do an internship in the city, which facilitates the, trans the transportation among the internships and coming back to class. And within that trajectory is like about 10 to 12 minutes. 
Uh, as a small public institution, we have an, a total enrollment of 8,300 students on, uh, enrolled, and our average class size is 19 to 25, which give you the opportunity to build up a relationship with your professors in case if you have any type of questions, so you're not understanding a, a specific topic, you are more than welcome to schedule a office hour or a meeting with your instructors, okay? So as I mentioned before, so as a small public institution, we do offer 47 bachelor's degree program, 30 master's degree programs, and two doctoral degree programs as well. So that means that if you are done with your undergraduate degree, you're more welcome to explore all of our master programs that we have and the transition between the undergrad and graduate degree will be a lot easier. Uh, this is some of the majors that we offer as the institution. The most popular uh, divisions that we have are business, chemistry, computer science, criminal justice, mathematics, uh, national security studies, and political science, and also psychology. We recently add up to, we added uh, fire science for those students that want to become a uh, firefighter. Okay. Um, and forward. What do you need in order to apply to New Jersey City University? Easily. First thing, your application, where it can be found in our webpage. You can Google uh, njcu.edu forward slash apply. Just click in the uh, freshman application, or you can find us in the common app. After the submission of your application, we will need your official transcript, your SAT score, which is optional, and your FAFSA. So now let's go one by one. When I mention official high school transcript, that means that you will need to request it to your guidance counselor and your guidance counselor must send it directly to us. Unfortunately, our school policy does not allow our students to send this document. Uh, and as in terms of SATs, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, going back. For to be regularly admitted into NJCU, you will need a, a minimum of a 2.8 GPA. And uh, also for a scholarship, you will be, you will be, it will be a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. So our scholarship matches go from $4,000 to all the way to $10,000 a year. And just be mindful that our tuition price is one, is the second lower in the state of New Jersey and goes in rounds about $13,000 a year. Um, as far as test score, we are test optional, which means that you don't need it in order to get an admissions decision. However, you will need to let us know if you would like to submit the said documentation or not. So we can call you as it, as it is in the system. This is our, this is our general admissions email that you can provide to your guidance counselor so they can uh, send your documents in or they can upload it in, the, in Navians as well. You would like to submit your test score, you're more than welcome to it. Just make sure that you download it as a PDF uh, file. And uh, you can uh, you can send it to your guidance counselor so they can upload it, or you can send it yourself. This document, you can send it yourself to the university, but not the transcript, don't forget that. Last but not least, the FOSFA. Do not forget to fill out the FOSFA. And remember, when you are finishing your FOSFA, make sure that you click Submit. It gives you two options, save and submit. You can save it and your information will be saved in the FASA page. However, you're not submitting your information to you to the schools that you want to go. You can add up to 10 schools in your, in your profile, but make sure that you click submit so all of those institutions can receive your financial aid information, okay? Visit campus. Yes, we are allowing visitors at campus. However, it's really limited. We are offering a virtual campus tour every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Fridays, we are offering in person. You can go uh, in njcu.edu forward slash visit and uh, register for either or. Okay. And uh, we do also offer athletes. We are Division Three. Unfortunately, we don't offer a scholarship for athletes. However, it's good to have a coach that can work as a, a counselor to make sure that you're going in the right way. We also have sororities, we have uh, student uh, associations, we do have uh, dorming, students can bring their, their car on campus, so and all of those good stuff. 
last but not least, my contact information. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to put it on the chat. So if you have any additional questions after this presentation, feel free to shoot me a message, okay? I'll be more than welcome. Where is the button? But make sure that you save my contact information so that way that way you can contact me right after okay it was a pleasure to share my info our information with you all i hope you have a wonderful evening and i wish you the best of luck in school thank you you yep <laughs> um next up we have stockton university thank you Okay, can you all see my screen? Can you just give me a thumbs up? Having a little bit of issues prior. Okay, great. All right, so good afternoon and welcome to um, a little slice of Stockton. Um, so just a little bit of information um, about Stockton University. So we are on a 1600 acre campus um, located in the New Jersey Pine Barrens located in Galloway, New Jersey. We do also have an Atlantic City campus. Just think of the two campuses as different um, areas with buildings. It's not like you apply to one and not the other kind of thing, um, but we do have um, something for everyone. We have the totally wooded area and then the city beach life, um, if this is something you are looking for as well. So as far as our um, size. We're not too big, not too small. Think three little bears, right? Um, we're around 10,000 undergrad students. Um, one of the numbers that I really like to focus on here is that 94%. 94% um, of our students attend full time. What that means is you're going to have the resources on campus because all of those students that are full time are, that's their only job is coming to school and doing those things. So you definitely are going to have a lot of clubs, activities, um, a lot of things going on campus, everything like that. So as far as um, what, I get this question a lot, um, and of course I will remind you again, but we are still taking applications for seniors and we are test optional. Um, so as far as our freshmen, um, what they typically look like is around a B average. Um, typically we like to see a little bit closer to the B plus um, with some uh, definitely mostly college prep and some AP and honors courses. Um, we no longer look for the SAT, but our average SAT is right around um, a 1200. And we also are test optional for scholarships as well. We look at GPA and uh, leadership and involvement in school, um, as well as jobs and everything like that, health and responsibility. So as far as residential, um, we have about 75% of our freshmen living on campus. The rest is really nice. It's broken down into like a third, a third, and a third. So a third of our students live on campus. A third of our students live off campus with some friends, maybe to save money. Um, they may find a, 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 a place to stay. Um, and a third of our, our students commute. Um, just one thing to um, mention here, we do not have dorms. They're all residence halls. Um, so it's a little step up. Um, they do all contain air conditioners, um, which was something when, you know, I was looking at colleges being fancy. That was, that was important to me. Um, there's a mini fridge in each room and a microwave that, that comes with the room. Parking is also included, which is a huge bonus for most students. Cars are allowed on campus starting your freshman year. So that's really awesome. And laundry is included, which was another huge uh, benefit to a student like me. Uh, we have over 160 areas of study, a um, bunch of different programs. We are well known for the health sciences, but this year we also ranked number two in the country for our hospitality management program. So we have a little bit of everything. Um, and one of the new programs that I will highlight here that goes hand in hand um, oftentimes with our business majors and also our medical students um, in pre-med or nursing is our cannabis studies program. Um, that is a very new program um, to even the United States. 
So we were one of the first schools to have that as well. Over 200 ways to get involved, 10,000 events each year. Um, and we do have uh, division three sports and we're, we have over 19 sports, um, including our big sports are rowing, basketball, and uh, baseball, softball. So admissions, financial aid, and scholarships, we're gonna go over this quickly a little bit. Um, so seniors, there's still time. Um, take down this coupon code. I love coupons. So I um, went ahead and offered you a um, coupon code to waive the application fee. Um, so go to stockton.edu slash apply, go to the Stockton application, and um, we can waive that. If you, do, if you do apply through the Common App, send me an email, which I'll send you in a second, and I can waive that as well. Um, as far as juniors, I have juniors reaching out. Give it a minute. Um, we will be um, accepting applications um, late summer. Give everybody a second to take a picture of that. It's stocked in you 2021 all caps. All right, so visit us virtually or in person. So we have been offering tours every day but Sunday in person. So you basically will be able to find a time to come visit us. Uh, we do have a lot of events going on on campus. Uh, of course, social distancing and safety are huge for us. You will have to sign a waiver before you come, but all of that is on the website. So just do me a favor and write this down. I'll also put it in the chat, but stockton.edu slash visit us. We do also have virtual components if you're more comfortable with that. Um, and on that visit us page, you can also make a one-to-one -one appointment with a college counselor like myself um, to talk more about the admissions process. All right, so thank you so much. Um, that is the information that I have for you today. Um, you can write down admissions.stockton.edu. That will take you right to our admissions page. Everything is on there as far as the visit us, the application fee waiver, how to apply. And also please email me any questions you have, comments, um, you like that we allow cars for freshmen and we don't charge for parking, anything like that. You can email me anything. Um, and um, just give you a second to snap a picture of that. And I'm all set. So thank you so much. All right, thank you. And definitely feel free to put any information into the chat. Uh, next up we have Rowan University. Thank you, Christy. Let me pull up my screen. Oh, there we go. Ah, all right. So hello, everyone. My name is Sharisa Burgos. I am one of the assistant directors at Rowan University. Oh, this is just going to go without me. Um, also a, an alum, a proud alum. I did my undergraduate program there and my master's program. Um, so do have the student experience. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I like to talk from both sides of the desk. Um, so a little bit about our campus and I'm gonna talk very fast. So um, if there's something I don't cover, feel free to ask a question as well. Um, so one of the first things we discuss about Rowan is our location. I think there are so many wonderful universities across our state, across the country, but what's really important is looking at a location of a school. Um, we're 20 minutes from Philadelphia, 15 minutes if you drive like me, I don't recommend that. Um, an hour from the Jersey Shore, two hours from New York City, two and a half from Washington DC. We don't have this up here, but about 45 minutes from Delaware. Um, so very much tri-state, there's so much going on and uh, Rowan is growing. We're one of the fastest growing universities in the state. Um, so you'll see that in programming, but also on our campus physically. So some of our campus locations is our main campus on Glassboro, in Glassboro, New Jersey. Um, this is where most of our undergraduate coursework is happening and our residential portion um, is or where our dorms are. Um, then we have our Camden campus located in Camden, New Jersey. Um, this is non-residential, but we do offer some undergraduate programs here. Um, and we're right across from uh, Rutgers Camden. So it's very much a university district in this part of Camden. Um, we also have one of our med schools here. Um, so it is a robust part of the area. Um, and really nice for students who may live in the area and want to commute. So it makes it a lot easier for them. Um, and we have transportation back and forth from our main campus to our other campuses. Then we have um, our West Campus, which is located in Melka Hill. This was a surprise to me because I honestly thought this was Glassboro, uh, but it's right on that line. So I sometimes feel like you can walk from one or the other. Uh, but right on our West Campus, we have new practice, 
practice field for our sports. Um, we have the South Jersey Tech Park, which serves essentially as a business incubator um, for tech startup tech companies. Um, so we have a lot of our students working here as well. We also have a lot of research going on with our engineering students in the west part of campus. So um, it, it's a lot of open space that has a lot of potential for growth. And um, recently, um, I believe Rowan sold some land to a new hospital. So there is a new hospital in the area, which is also really great for some of our students who are interested in any of the pre-health uh, programming. And then we have two medical schools. So we're one of three universities across the country that have two medical granting programs, Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, which again is located in Camden, New Jersey. That's our MD program. And we have Rowan University School of Osteopathic Medicine. We call it Rowan SOM for short. And this is a DO program located in Stratford, New Jersey. Um, so we have over 80 undergraduate uh, bachelor degree programs listed under these uh, schools and colleges. Um, can't go through them all, but I definitely recommend that if you know if you're interested in something, um, you know, you could dig a little deeper or you can reach out to me and I can provide you some more information. What is always so impressive to me is just to see how many uh, specializations and minors that we offer. Um, so for instance, one of my favorites is um, in our business school, we have a, a specialization in accounting forensics. So if you know you're really great with numbers, you love accounting, this is a great specialization to have um, our students get jobs within the government to be able to detect fraud. Um, so again, that's just one small example, but we have a lot of these really unique um, specializations and concentrations within our programs. Um, we also do have master level programs, about 60 master level programs and five doctoral programs. So I know some students who have done their undergraduate all the way through their uh, doctoral program at Rowan. Um, so some unique pathways, admission pathways, and I think this is so important because no student's journey looks the same. Um, we offer some programs that allow students to complete their degree in three years. It's a year-round degree pathway program, so we offer about 15 of our programs that are able to do this. Um, the benefit is that students are actually saving 25% of tuition by completing their degree in three years. Um, you also get free summer housing, so that's the caveat. You actually um, will spend two summers completing coursework. Um, but I just think it's great to be able to complete a degree in three years. We also have Rowan Choice, so we've created some unique partnerships with our local community colleges where students can actually stay on our campus, get the campus experience, but complete their first one or two years at the local community college, which is Rowan College of South Jersey. Um, and that allows them to, you know, start their degree at a cheaper price, but still get that campus experience. Um, we also offer EOF uh, under the Ascend program at Rowan. So if you have any questions about EOF, feel, feel free to reach out. Um, and then Rowan at Home, which was uh, birthed out of the pandemic. Um, we recognized that, uh, you know, completing their degree from home was something that was comfortable for some students. Um, so being able to have that flexibility for students to be able to complete their degree from the comfort of their home was definitely um, something that needed to happen. Um, and it was very successful. So we are gonna maintain that momentum um, with the Rowan at Home. Um, and other than that, even if you don't wanna complete a, an, your degree completely at home, we do offer a lot of virtual um, course courses. So uh, if you wanna do a blend, you can do that as well. Um, a little bit about our enrollment profile. So we're about a medium-sized school, 16,000 undergraduate students, 2,400 graduate students, and about 1,200 professional medical students. So across those categories, you're looking at about 19,618 students. Um, student to faculty ratio, 17 to one, with an average class size about 20. I know in one of my senior courses, I had about nine students in my coursework. Um, so I just think I, I sound like Goldilocks when I talk about Rowan, but I feel like when you walk across our campus, you won't see the same people every day. But when you get to your class, you're gonna get that attention that it's very intimate class setting where you're able to have discussions, you are you know, actively a part of those, those discussions and you're able to get assistance from your teacher. Um, one of my first internships was through one of my professors. So I was super happy that I was able to build that you know, relationship with that professor that they uh, took upon themselves to help me find my first internship. So a little bit about our application. Um, we are Common App exclusive. We're gonna be looking for your application fee waiver form, high school transcript. We are test optional this year. Um, audition and portfolio, if you're applying into any of our art programs or music programs. Um, and so we did extend our deadline to May 1st. We also have a waiver code, which I'll share in the chat box. Um, and yeah, we extended it to May 1st, I think I said that. Um, and if you wanna enroll, um, we will extend that deadline as well. 
whew, I feel like I have so much more to go. It's so hard to get in six minutes, but um, anything that I missed, I will add in that chat box. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you learned something. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Fairla Dickinson University. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining today. My name is Maura Fox. I am an admissions counselor at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with all of you so we can get this presentation started. All right, perfect. So Fairleigh Dickinson, we are the largest private institution in New Jersey, but we actually have two separate campuses, both of which are located in Northern New Jersey. So you'll see here our Florham campus on the left, it's located in Madison. So it's more of your traditional suburban college campus setting. Our metropolitan campus, it's located in Teaneck. So it is closer to New York City, only about 15 minutes away from it. So it definitely is a bit bigger and it gives you more of that city feel. Across our two campuses, we do offer over 100 majors and concentrations for you to choose from, ranging from a variety of areas like business, psychology, education, nursing, pre-med, um, definitely a lot of options for you. And the majority of these majors are offered on both campuses, which is great to know because in the beginning of the application process, you are choosing which campus you want to go to. Our student to faculty ratio is only at about 12 to one. So we have an average class size of only 15 students. That's going to give you great opportunities to get to know your professor, seek the help when you need it. You're definitely not just going to be a number in a classroom here at FDU. Outside of the classroom, we do offer over 100 clubs and organizations for you to join, ranging from Greek life, athletics, um, religious-based, community service oriented. So really anything that you're interested in, you can probably find that at FDU. And if you can't, you can actually start a club yourself. We've had plenty of our students, even our first years, go on to start their own clubs here at FDU. We offer 43 combined degree programs, which is essentially getting your bachelor's and your master's degree in only five years. So you're saving time and money that way, which is a great perk, especially when it comes to college. And lastly, we do offer very generous um, financial aid, both need-based and merit-based money for our students, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but more specifically going over the differences between our two campuses, our metropolitan campus is definitely more city-like because it is right outside of New York City. It has closer to 5,000 students total, so it is a bit bigger. And about half of the first year students live on campus while the other half commute. And we are division one for our athletics teams at the metropolitan campus. As for Florham, located in Madison, um, it definitely is more residential, like I mentioned before. So the majority of students are living on campus all four years, and it is a bit smaller with less than 3,000 students total. And we have division three sports over at that team. So two campuses, two different sports divisions, plenty of options for you to choose from. And like I mentioned before, we are very close to New York City. Um, the Florham campus is only about an hour train ride away. So it's very easy for our students to go in and out, whether you're looking to go there over the weekend, you know, when we're not in the middle of a pandemic to maybe see a show or check out a museum, but also for internships, it's a really popular option for students because of that easy access going in and out of the city using public transportation. In addition to internships, we have a lot of great areas for you to really gain that experience before you graduate. Um, so whether that's through our networking opportunities with our career development office, um, we host our career fair every semester, we have guest speakers come to campus to talk more about their experience within the field. And then we also have some really awesome study abroad programs that are unique to FDU, mainly because we actually have our own international campuses. We have one in England and one in Vancouver, Canada. But if you don't wanna to go to any of those or those two places, I should say, we do have partnerships with universities all across the world. So you can really go wherever you want. Um, plus all of your scholarships and financial aid will transfer over when you study abroad. So you're literally paying the same price as if you were to stay in New Jersey. So I would highly, highly recommend looking into that. Talking a little bit more about the application process, we are located on the Common App for your convenience. We also do have our own online application. So whatever is easiest for you. We're rolling admissions, meaning that you can apply to us at any time. So if you're a current senior, our application is still open. We would be happy to review it for you. Um, but when you do enter your senior year, typically that application opens in late August. We do have a priority deadline of December 1st, which just means that if you submit your application before then, it will be free. Plus you will receive an additional $1,000 each year that you come to FDU. 
The biggest thing that we look at are your high school transcripts. So we want to see how you've performed throughout your four years and everything else for us is optional. So test scores are optional. We won't hold it against you if you don't have any. Um, the Common App essay is optional. Letters of recommendation and a resume, those are all completely up to you whether or not you want to submit them. Talking a little bit about financial aid and scholarships, um, every student who gets accepted is awarded a merit scholarship and that's based on those transcripts. Um, they're renewable all four years and they range up to $24,000. On the need-based side of things, we will accept the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. You can fill that out starting October 1st of your senior year. And with that, we will provide you with an additional financial aid package that is separate from that merit scholarship that we're giving you. So we are very generous with our aid. About 97% of our first year students received some form of scholarship last year. And to add on to that good news, we've actually just recently announced that we are lowering our tuition by 25%. So starting this coming fall 2021, tuition will be at $32,000 per year. That's something we are really excited to offer to our future students as a way to provide more access to future FDU students to get that education. If you do have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to me, whether that's through this chat here, um, or you can go ahead and send me an email or give me a call. My number and my email address is listed here on this screen, and our social media is listed on the bottom as well. Um, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have St. Peter's University. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee, and I'm Assistant Director of Undergrad Admissions at St. Peter's University. Um, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, let's get started. Uh, so St. Peter's is a Jesuit university, so this means different things to different people, uh, but we always like to say our students come for a degree but leave with so much more. Um, really some of the big takeaways, uh, there's a lot of options for community service, uh, cure personalis, which I'll mention again in a second. Um, one thing I do want to get out of the way right off the bat is um, you do not have to be Catholic to attend St. Peter's. We are welcoming to everyone, um, regardless of background, faith, religion, anything like that. St. Peter's is welcome to or welcomes everyone. Um, so we are a pretty small school, about 3,600 students. Student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Um, and there's that care personalis I mentioned a second ago. So that is a Jesuit tradition, um, which we really believe in. It means care for the whole person. Um, so at St. Peter's, your professors care about you more than just academically. They wanna see you succeed in all facets of your life. Um, so they're they're gonna be there for you um, and make sure they can help you every step of the way. Um, not just the professors, but other staff on campus, things like that. Everyone is there to see you succeed. Um, average class size your freshman year is around 22. You can get down to as low as 13 or 14 once you get more into your concentration. Um, and we even have some labs with as few six or seven students. Um, we do have a 94% job placement rate after graduation, which is a number that we are super, super proud of. Um, so this means 94% of our students are either in graduate school or have a job in their field after graduating. Um, you can see here we have over 50,000 hours of community engagement, community service. Um, so again, going back to our Jesuit identity, that's something really, really important to us. Um, and our mascot is the peacock. So that's Peter. Um, he's pretty awesome. Uh, you can see him at sporting events all the time. It's really great when we see him around campus. Um, so we are located in Jersey City, New Jersey, or about 12 minutes from Manhattan. So super great location, tons of amazing internship opportunities, um, as well as a lot of fun stuff to do, um, as you guys all know. <laughs> So for academics, we do have over 50 majors at St. Peter's. Our top five most popular, business, biology, psychology, criminal justice, and nursing. Um, with those majors, we do have some amazing state-of-the-art technologies as well. We have a trading room that kind of mimics Wall Street. Uh, we have a nursing simulation lab, so you can practice on these dummies before you get out and um, do anything on real people. Um, we also have a cybersecurity center on campus, as well as a new computer lab with artificial intelligence um, stuff so, <laughs> so that um, you can work with our new concentration in artificial intelligence and machine learning. We do have over 70 clubs on campus. Um, we have everything from cultural clubs to religious faith-based clubs. Um, we have fun clubs like anime club, knitting club, and my perfect 
my personal favorite is the Puppy Club, um, where you actually train a service dog. So that's super cool. Um, we also have our Student Entertainment Board, um, which puts on a ton of different events for our students, like the Peacock Color Run, which you can see pictured here. We have intramural sports as well as extramural sports for our students. We are Division One for athletics. You can see the sports we have here. Um, our students love to go out and cheer on our peacocks. So definitely um, keep that in mind. If you are interested in becoming an athlete at St. Peter's, definitely kind of reach out to the coach and get that process started as soon as possible because um, it's really hard to walk onto a team. For residence life, you are guaranteed housing all four years. Uh, freshman, sophomore years, the traditional residence hall style doubles and triples. Um, junior, senior years, more apartment style. Um, this room you can see pictured here is huge compared to what I lived in uh, when I went to school. Um, that being said, we are about 60% commuter students, 40% residents. So we do have a free shuttle that goes from Journal Square, which is the train, train and bus station, um, about a block from campus. So you can definitely walk if you want to. Uh, we do have plenty of parking. We have eight lots on campus. Um, and we do also offer commuter meal plans. So you're not going to go hungry when you're, when you're coming to campus. For the application process, we do what's called a holistic reading at St. Peter's. So we look at everything. Um, so we do look at your official transcript um, to look at the rigor of your courses, what courses you've taken, things like that. Um, we do look at your test scores. If you choose to submit them, we are test optional for everything but nursing. Um, we look at your essay. We look at your letters of recommendation. We want to get to know more about you to assess your readiness for college and if you'd be a good fit at St. Peter's. Cost of attendance. I know these are really big numbers, but I want you to stick with me. Um, tuition's around 39. Ruben Boards around 16, bringing your total to around 55. No one pays that um, because every student admitted to St. Peter's does receive a scholarship. This year, our baseline scholarship was $20,000, and it moves up with GPA and or SAT score all the way to a full ride. On top of that, if your parents or grandparents went to St. Peter's, you get a little bit of a bump there. Um, just 98% of our students receive additional forms of financial aid as well, so we can end up rivaling state schools. Uh, so if you're ready to apply, we are rolling admissions. So we are still set accepting applications if there's any seniors here. Um, for our juniors, again, the application will go live usually at the end of August. Um, and we are on the Common App and have our own PDF application. Um, you can also see my email at the bottom there, but I will drop that in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, if I could have all the panelists come back, we will answer this question in the same order that you presented. Um, all right. So the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Starting with George and Gord. Uh, my advice to people going through the college search process is uh, something I did personally that really helped was to make like a chart of sorts, list all of the schools you're interested in, and then really think about all of the individual factors that are most important to you. The things that were most important to me were, uh, did they offer the major that I wanted? How close was it to home? And then there could be other things like athletics or availabilities of different clubs, things like that. And just try and keep in mind what schools have what exactly you're interested in. Uh, it was a really tough decision for me at first, but once I did that and really put things down and looked at it from a standpoint of things that were most important to me, it became a lot easier to narrow things down. So I definitely recommend trying out something like that. So uh, the biggest advice that I can give to any applicant is to try to utilize your admissions counselor as much as you can. Uh, you have to understand that we're the main point of contact, we're the main person that will be driving you through the whole entire process. So do not be afraid of calling us. Do not be afraid of saying that email. Do not be afraid to ask that question. We're here for you. This is what we get paid for, okay? Feel free to utilize us as a resource to know as much as you can from a specific institution, okay? Shoot that email, send that, send that, uh, make that phone call, send that text message, all right? And if we don't have the answer, the answer, at least we'll be able to provide you a contact information that can lead you to the answer that you're looking for. All right. Hi everyone, Allison. Uh, it's Allison here. 
Um, so my biggest advice is to definitely shop around. Um, there are so many schools and universities and you can definitely find your right fit um, at your affordability level as well with scholarships and everything like that. Um, with that being said, I know last year it was a little more challenging, but a lot of our campuses, including Stockton, I'll, I'll plug us again, um, are open for visits. Um, it is so important to visit the campus, even though you won't get the same feel um, because you know there's not as many students on campus, you can really visualize yourself in that right school. And once you find that school, everything else kind of falls into place. Um, you know, as long as they have your major and your area of study and, you know, you're, you've already done your research, go visit. I would say visit at least five schools um, if you're able to. Um, so that's, that's definitely my advice. Um, do your research. Uh, College Board is a great uh, website um, to, to start that or even to go on to make sure you didn't miss anything. And um, that's it for me. Um, yeah, so all of the above, I thought that was also great. Um, it's hard to go from there, but I'm a big wish list type of girl, whether it's making a Christmas list or a college list. Um, so I think it's really important to sit down and think about all the things that make you tick and what's really important to you. Um, you know, do you want a big school, a small school? Do you want something that's affordable? Does it have your majors, location important to you? Um, do you want a school that has, you know, a lot of students that are residing on campus? Um, and really use those college search engines. And I would say use a few of them to see if you're getting the same answer with each one, um, you know, and see what kind of comparisons are there. Um, and then my, my last piece of advice is that when you finally kind of narrow down a few colleges, there's nothing more important than visiting those. So I would say get down to about between five and 10. Um, and I know I, I didn't understand this concept until I bought a house, but I would never buy a house just from looking at it online. Um, I knew when I walked into my house, I was like, this is the one after seeing about 10 of them. So it's the same thing with a campus. You won't know until you actually walk on campus, you'll know this is the right fit. It feels good. I feel comfortable. So definitely uh, taking a chance to get on campus. Yeah, going off of that, um, do whatever you can to picture yourself at that university. So in addition to visiting and taking a tour, see if you can sit in on a class, if you can eat in the dining hall, if you can talk to current students. Anything that you can do to really picture yourself at that school physically, um, getting there if you can, of course, given the circumstances. I think that's been a great way for a lot of students to really get that feeling as cheesy as it sounds, you step on campus and you're like, wow, this is home to me. That is a very possible feeling that most students get, especially when they come onto campus. So do whatever you can to see yourself as a future student at that university. Yeah, I think my biggest piece of advice um, is going to be to ask questions. Um, that's what we're here for. Uh, that's what we, we want to talk to you. We want to let you know more about our universities. So definitely reach out, ask questions. Um, there is no dumb question. You're not annoying. Um, we love to talk to you guys. So. All right. Thank you all to our expert, our panelists, and thank you to everyone who was able to tune in. Uh, the one thing I will echo is just contact these folks. They know what they're doing. This is their job to find if you are a good fit for this uh, university, this institution. So please reach out to these folks. Thank you for being a part of this and best of luck to those out there. And thank you again to our panelists and have a good night.